Hey everybody, it's Simon Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got this really nice little Christmas gift bag. This is a six by five and a half by five and a half. So it's using two pieces of 12 by 12 cardstock, but it's this big, short and dumpy gift bag. So it folds flat and then you just obviously open it up and it's got this nice single handle over the top. And this one, I like to give those mini kind of Christmas cakes or cupcakes to some people at Christmas. And this will fit four of the kind of cupcakes and one of the, the mini actual, you know, Christmas cakes or birthday cake. I mean, this would make a great um, birthday gift bag as well. But that's the idea for this. And also just any other gifts that you may have that are, you know, shorter but wider. This would work quite well, like big body butters things like that they would go nicely in this as well so if you've got lots of like you know hand creams and smellies and things like that to give to someone this would be a nice gift bag cover it with tissue and yeah you're good to go but I like that it can fold flat as well and this one is using these aren't Christmas papers at all but it did end up looking like a Christmas gift bag I actually made this a while ago and then when I made it I thought that's too Christmassy I'm going to hold it back so for this one here I use the bring it in the botanical beauty papers so it was this one here and the reason I like this a lot is I folded over this cardstock so when you're making this one I, I would say it's best with a because I like this crisp thick white kind of you know edge that you've got all the way around the top there so if you've got single-sided paper that's probably best for this but double you know printed and stuff like that will still look lovely as well but that's the one I use there okay so for today's one I am using Again, I said you're going to see me using this a lot. Oh, focus, there we go. Um, it's the Jolly Holidays. So this again is the one that I've been using for all that foliage. I've used it so much for my wreaths, for little decorations. So I've already done my kind of little topper there, which is the same as that one, but just in matching, you know, greens and reds for the papers I'm using today. And I've just got that from this one here. If I pull it out, because I didn't show the separate piece but it's a frame and a inner piece. So that is what I've used and that just cuts out these lovely little pieces. And then if you wanna have it as a solid piece with the matching stamps, which I have, then there's that one there as well. So yeah, those are the Tropical Thinlet dies by stamping up. So, you know, they, they can be used for all year round. So it's really good. That's that one. And then they're the circles that I've just used. So I've just used that nice fancy edge one here and then this very um, small detailed pretty one there. So that is how I've made that. I've got my strap here which is a piece of one and a quarter by 12 or a four length. It doesn't matter. You could even have letter so 11 inch as well it would be fine. I've already done one. That's the paper I'm going to be using today. When I shared this before this paper pack I said that this particular paper would look really nice for a gift bag. because so it's just got loads of lovely sentiments all over it. And that's the paper pack, Jolly Holidays. I'm gonna be using loads and loads and loads of this. It's beautiful. Okay, all the links and everything, as always, will be shared in my blog. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the scoring on this plain paper, but you'll be doing this, obviously, on your paper that you're gonna be using, but it'd just be easier for me to talk through the score lines. So, with your paper facing the right way up, so if you've got any patterns that need to be in the right direction, you want them facing up. So you're gonna do your first score lines at six and 11 and a half. Okay, so there's my six and my eleven and a half. This is going to be your half inch tab. So just rotate your cardstock so that half inch tab is now facing the top. And you then need to score at six and a half. Okay, then flip it and score at one. Now the reason we're flipping it is this one inch one is going to be that white side, that lip all around the top of the bag and that's going to be folding in a completely opposite way to the other score line so that if you flip it over it will just prevent cracking. So I've just popped it back again and again you can see that one inch score line and then that six and a half. Okay, okay so this is all the scoring you need to do for it to not fold flat. So if you just want a nice rigid upright gift bag then keep it like this. If you want it to fold flat Rotate it back against that half inch tab is facing the top and you're going to score at three and three quarters on one piece you're going to score all the way down okay but on the other piece you're going to score at three and three quarters down past that first score line and down to this second score line. So one piece of paper will be the front of our gift bag and the other will be the back. So if I show you here 
This one here doesn't have that score line. If I open it up just to give you a bit more of an understanding for anybody new. But this three and three quarter score line is this one here. And on this piece, it was only done down to this score line here. So past the, the tab would have been there, but that's hidden now, down to that score line. Not all the way down, because otherwise you'd see it on the front. But it is all the way down on the back piece. Okay, so that's why I said on one piece of cardstock, you're going to have your three and three quarters all the way down. And on another piece, you're going to have three and three quarters past that first score line and just down to the second score line. Okay, so there is that score line. Then rotate it back again and you're going to score at one, two, two, so it'll be eight and three quarters down past this first one and to the second, okay? And that is doing this score line here in the middle, okay? So again, this is all so it folds flat. You don't need to do this if you don't want that. So this is what you should have if you want it to fold flat. You'll have one like this and you'll have one with this score line going right the way down. One's your back, one's your front. Okay, next we need to do a couple of other score lines just with your metal ruler and your stylus. And you're gonna score from the bottom of this score line down to there and this one down to there, just within that rectangle, not including this tab here. So I'm just gonna pop my stylus down and just score down to this bottom right and then bring this one across and down to the bottom left okay and you want to do that scoring everything again on both pieces like I keep saying just the only difference will be is one will just have the score line to here and one will have it all the way through okay so now you want to burnish all of your straight score lines this one here remember we scored it differently so that one is going to fold down like so and if like I said if you're just using single-sided paper you'll have this as white or whatever plain color it may be and this will be all your pattern paper here all the other score lines will fold the other way okay like so and then these ones here you can kind of pinch it down to the top of the triangle and then you can push them over like so okay then we need to do some cutting again I'm going to do it on here just because it's easy for you to see and then I'll bring in my one in a minute so along the bottom with that tab on the right hand side this is your base these ones here so just cut all the way up like so and then with this one here you want to cut up this score line just to the first one here totally remove that piece okay and then you want to take a nice wedge off of the two sides there okay like so and then you can take a little wedge off of that one there as well and while we're on the tab, go on up, not that score line, but this little one here where you've got this little rectangle in the top corner. You just want to remove that completely. And again, just take a little wedge off of that one there. Okay, so that is now what you should have. Then rotate it right round, so now we're on this one inch piece. And what you want to do is cut down the score line. So cut down that score line just to the first one and cut down that score line just to the first one and then you just want to do a little decorative kind of neat wedge so you want to keep them the same I'm coming in about a quarter of an inch and cutting down so I've just removed that tiny little triangle and what you can do to make sure you get each one the same is if you flip that over <laughs> I know it's tiny and pop it on ignore those ones just pop it on the corner there like so Let's see what I've just done and then just trace along that one I'm just going to snip the top so I know where I am and then you can just follow that down like so or you can just get a ruler and just mark a quarter of an inch in on both sides but now when we fold it over you see you get this nice kind of little detail like I've done there where it just comes in okay you want to do that again on all of these again about the same I'm just going to eyeball it okay so you can see there what I've done so now when they all fold over once we stick them down you'll see all that detail plus by doing that one there it doesn't interfere with that fold 
you can see here. If we didn't do that one, there would be too much bulk there and it just wouldn't help that kind of folding flat. So you want to do that on both of your pieces. Okay, so you'll now have two pieces. One will just have that score line going all the way through, one will just have it just to there. So what you want to do now is we need to cut our little kind of slit. So we have this piece here, the handle is concealed underneath this so I've cut a little slit just there. So this is that piece of cardstock, let me just grab my handle again. So this is one and a quarter by, again whatever length it is you want, but what you want to be doing is cut your slit to whatever the width is of your handle and a little bit extra, not much, just a little bit. So I've already done this one here, I'm going to show you on the other one, but now that piece will go in and once that's down flat you can see there how nice it looks and it's completely concealed. Okay, So what you want to do is along the longest flap here okay, with your metal ruler and your cutting knife, if you don't have a cutting knife you can use scissors, you just have to be extra careful but basically what you want to do is I'm just thinking it might be easier I'm going to again show you on the template here so with my ruler I'm going to pop my ruler so it sits perfectly along here and you'll see there it's six inches this piece that we're working in so you want to come in at two and a quarter okay so two and a quarter so I'm just going to pop a little marker there, let me grab my, because this is the template. So two and a quarter there, and then you're going to come up by two and a quarter from this side, like so. That is where we're going to cut between these two markers, and that will give us the nice little pocket to slide that in. Yeah, so this the pocket ends up being one and... Uh, five, uh, one and three eighths, just about. Okay, so like I said, it's a little bit bigger. You can see there how big it is on each side. Again, just pop my ruler in. This is the Tonic Studios cutting knife, and it is very good. And you get, I think, eight free blades with it. But you can see there, it's just yeah, very very sharp. Do be careful. But now you will have this nice little pocket. Again, I'll just use that to show you, and that will sit in there perfectly. Okay, so do that on both pieces. Okay, so I've already stuck these two sides down on one of my pieces. Um, this is my back actually bit for the minute. And then I've put tape all on this flap here. And I've put tape on both sides of my handles. Okay, so I'm just going to put one handle in first. The other one I'm going to do once we put all the sides together. But I do find it easier to do this when it's flat. But obviously you can't do both the handles before you stick it all together. So I've taken both the backings off of both sides, carefully slide that through like so and basically you just want to stick it and so it doesn't pop out the width, the one inch width of this. Make sure it's nice and straight, so that's that one there and then I'll take all my backings off of this. Okay and then just fold that over. So you want to do that just on one, like I said I've done it on the back piece for the minute and then stick those two down as well, so that's what you should have on your back piece. Then I've put all my double sided tape on my tabs. Then you want to bring over your other piece, which I've already again stuck those bits down, I've cut the little slot there and then that piece will stick over at the end, so I'm not doing that yet. Basically you just want to sit this one so match up the score line at the top of your base there, like so, and then the rest should all marry up, there we go, and then flip it over, and you can fold this one over, take the backing off, and bring that all the way over, and again it should all perfectly line up, like so. Okay, so then all we've got left to do is pop this through, but again we'll do that right at the end, but that will go through there, creating the front, and then we've got our base. So we'll stick all that down next, so with the front facing up, okay, this piece is going to be the last one to go down, so you want your back piece to go up first, 
and then what I'm going to do is put glue on this one, stick that down, glue on that one, stick it down, and then glue on here and stick it down. Okay, and I'm just inside with a ruler, just making sure all that glue sticks down because you've got a larger area inside. Okay, and then we can get our handle. Again, take the backings off of the ends there. Carefully feed it through the little slot. Again, making sure it doesn't come down further than the inch. Again, and keeping it nice and straight, like so. And then I've got my backings on here, and then just stick that piece down. And like I said, I just think it looks so nice with that white piece that folds over. So then, if you just push in the sides above the triangle with your finger, on that back score line, just kind of start to push it in, and the whole thing will fold flat. Brilliant, love this. So now, I just need to decorate it. So I've already got my bit here all finished, and I've put some foam adhesive on the back, so you can make matching tags and all that kind of stuff as well. And then that is going to just stick right in the middle. Oh, it looks so nice and just really finishes. Look at that, how nice is that? So there you have it, open it back up again. He's really nice, like I said, short and dumpy, but I think really handy gift bags. And um, like I said, they're great for Christmas cakes, cupcakes, those larger, thicker gifts. So um, fold them both, both flat, there you have it. So I hope you've enjoyed today's gift bag tutorial. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching, bye.